Hey, what's going on? What's going on? I've got a blizzard in my workshop. That's what's going on. Besides the regular supporting cast seen in He-Man and Masters of the Universe, there were other characters that would come back for occasional return appearances, such as Zagraz, the Keeper of the Comets, Zodak, the Cosmic Guardian, Driel, and Granimir. Today, I'll focus on a lesser-known returning character, Malik, who appeared in two Season 1 episodes, The Wizard of Stone Mountain and The Witch and the Warrior. Malik first appeared in The Wizard of Stone Mountain, near the halfway point of Season 1. In this episode, it's revealed that years ago, he had a crush on Tila, and he's still bitter about being rejected by her. Malik is visited by Lokos, who promises that he can bring Tila to Malik for an unspecified reward. As soon as they make the deal, Locus starts some shit up by blowing up a dam and Malik is unable to do anything about it. Tila, He-Man and Ram-Man go to deal with Malik and hook up with his assistant Kareen, who's been trying to talk sense into Malik. Eventually, Locos reveals that the price for Malik getting Tila for himself is his soul. Locos calls upon his master, who is introduced as the personification of evil. Kareen offers her soul in exchange for Malik's, and the evil is about to accept, but in the cliché deal with the devil fashion, her unconditional love for Malik defeats the evil. Malik gets off scot-free, and Malik and Kareen end up together. The Wizard of Stone Mountain is a really cute episode. I especially love how everyone takes jabs at Tila, who keeps insisting that Malik was never her boyfriend, and gets quite pissed about it. Malik? Uh, your old boyfriend? Don't you start in on it, too! He-Man is being a bit uncharacteristically douchey for much of this episode, but Tila gets back at him towards the end. Actually, there's someone I've been working with that I've grown rather fond of. Coming, Ram-Man. <laughs> Ram-Man? That was hilarious. Hey, guys. When you got it. <laughs> you got it! The animation quality and the character interaction make this into a really awesome episode. In fact, its only real weakness are the villains, Locos and Evil. Evil in itself is interesting because he's essentially the He-Man version of the Devil and his voice is certainly menacing enough. No! It cannot be. He is as powerful as I. But he just looks like a flame with a face and hands, which really isn't a very threatening look. However, it's Locos who slightly ruins this episode for me. I mean, yeah, he looks pretty darn bad, but he sounds worse. Well, there is a price involved. A rather high price. Malak, the wizard of Stone Mountain, destroyed our crops, but master! Silence! I don't know if it's John Irwin, Alan Oppenheimer, or even Lou Scheimer who does that screechy voice, but it makes me want to pull my hair out every single time. It crops up as a character voice several times during the series, but usually as an incidental voice. However, Locos has such a large presence in this episode that it's almost a little distracting. However, regardless, I still consider this a good episode and worth a watch. The second episode Malik appeared in was from the very end of Season 1. Basically, Malik is called to help protect a magical healing spring. Skeletor and some fat fuck named Kothos are both trying to gain the spring's power. Malik calls Adam and Tila to help, while Skeletor sends Evil Lynn to get the water, along with Clawful, a new toyline-based henchman who started appearing near Season 1's end. However, Kothos has the last laugh when he uses his magic to fly the castle away and steals Evelyn's magic powers and dumps her and Tila into the desert. This episode is a fan favorite since it shows Tila and Evelyn having to work together while stranded in the desert. Evelyn has to get by without any magic and she and Tila share some pretty good character dialogue. I've studied the habits of every vicious creature on this planet. Takes one to know one, I guess. In fact, they're the real stars of this episode, which means that He-Man and Malak don't really get to do a whole lot. The episode is also really well animated. I really didn't care for Kothos as the principal villain of this episode, but he also meets with a rather harsh end, being turned into a giant slug. He later reappeared in Season 2. This episode didn't quite make it to my top 10 He-Man episodes list, though, because beyond Evil Lynn and Tila working together, there isn't anything that surprising about the episode. Except that you get to see Tila without her tiara and Evil Lynn without her helmet. It's still a pretty good episode, and I do recommend it. See you all next time. I have the power, so can you.